So I'm here inside Edinburgh Genomics Laboratories and I want to tell you about this plate. It contains DNA samples from the Lothian birth cohorts of 1921 and 1936 and it's very special. This is the last plate from the Lothian samples that is going to go on to this machine at Edinburgh Genomics and it's going to complete over 1,000 samples that are going to be tested for whole genome sequencing. That means that the people in the Lothian birth cohort will now have had over 3 billion genetic tests. All of their DNA will have been tested. It's interesting that you ask why we should whole genome sequence all of the people in the Lothian birth cohorts of 1921 and 1936. Well, it arose because of the value of the Lothian birth cohorts. They've got information from childhood, like their IQs from age 11. In older age, they have many cognitive tests, brain scans, we sample their blood, they tell us a lot about their social background, and Professor Hume, here at the head of the Roslyn Institute, heard about the cohorts and thought they would be such a valuable international sample that they should be sequenced. And he raised money from the BBSRC, who funded the sequencing, now being done at Edinburgh Genomics. We hope, in fact we expect, that we'll find some genetic associations with healthy ageing in the cohort themselves, now that we've got this very rich genetic information to add to the other things that they've got by way of what we know about their brains and their thinking skills and their health in general and their life course. But more than that, we'll be joining with other groups worldwide that also have gene sequencing data and partnering people that, for example, can add to that brain imaging data and genetic methylation or epigenetic data too. There's also a third use we can make of the Lothian cohort samples. Because they have reached old age in generally very good health, they'll be extremely useful, we think, worldwide as a sample of controls for other disease states. So in and of themselves, in partnership with others, and as controls for disease states, we think these gene sequencing data will be well worth the money and a great deal of scientific use. I'm now in the room in Edinburgh Genomics, where the sequencing is being done on the Lothian birth court 1936 and 21 samples. And this is a flow cell. It contains the DNA from eight members of the cohorts and machines behind me, the Illumina HiSeq Xs are doing that and they'll take about three days to do the whole genome sequence for the three billion base pairs for every sample. To do whole genome sequencing when we started the Lothian cohorts would have been unimaginable, literally unimaginable. Then, at the time, to do just one of the three billion base pairs in the genome cost us about 16 pounds. That's one of the three billion. Things moved on such that now we're doing all three billion for 700 pounds. So we're now waiting for the whole genome sequencing data to come off and what will happen to it? Well, we have a number of scientists who are ready for this. And what they will do is they will use the data for each person's sequence and they'll try to relate that to other aspects of their health and their life. So, for example, to what their brains look like on the occasions that they've been brain scanned, their thinking skills and the various aspects of health that we've measured. So what we hope to find out are some of the rarer genetic states that relate to health measures. 